Hi, I'm going to show you two new products in amplifiers and some cabinets too. This is the new WJBA 2000 watt amp. 2000 watts, yep. At 4 ohms or 8 ohms, yep. At 4 or 8. Unheard of. It's got two 1000 watt power amp modules in it. Um, you can use one of them or both of them. Now we pair this with the new passive cabinets. Uh, they're exactly the same as the previous powered cabinets, but they don't have the handles and the wheels. Um, so th nothing's changed. We've put a beautiful vinyl finish on these um, and the control panels are now on the back. So it leaves you all the space on the top to put your head. Or you can actually stack them vertically now. You can have one on top of the other that way as well as sideways. So, what does this beautiful thing do? Uh, it's a twin channel preamp, the same as the WJBP2, with the two power amps built in. Now, you can virtually run this flat. Start with your source. You get an input gain first. There's my input gain on this channel. If I have it too much, it'll clip. So you just back it off so it doesn't clip. And then you've maximized the source of your, your source in input into the amp. Now you want to EQ it. So you start here on your bass first. That's nice. I don't need to do much. It's a beautiful bass. I go to my D string for my mids. It's flat. And some slap for the G maybe. It's flat. It is a good bass. So I might want to fine tune the instrument here uh, and compared to different rooms you might want to change your EQ a little bit. So each one of those knobs is set to the attack point of each of the four strings on a bass. Um, the E string, that punch part, is where the bass control is set and centered around. It's 40 hertz, but that's 80 hertz. That's the attack point of the E string. So, I only boosted just a little bit, just for what I like. Now the next one, the low mid, is the A string. Flat. <laughs> and it doesn't interfere with the one you're either side of, like older amps did. You, if you change one, it'd interfere with the frequency that was beside it. Um, and you work your way up, so D, flat, G, and slap it, if you want the treble. Uh, so that's virtually what the EQ does, it's flat. If I'm slapping, I might just want to back the mids off it, a scoop it just a tad. It's hardly moved. But it tightened up that mid area. So that's the EQ section. There's a pan control here now. I'm using two cabinets. And this is a stereo in and stereo out. So you could actually play one of the old Rickenbacker stereo basses in there and have true stereo from your instrument and out. But I'm not, so we just use both sides of this, both power amps. If I pan to one side, it's gone to one cabinet. If I go to the other, it's gone to the other cabinet. So if you were using one cabinet only, you would pan it to that output that you're coming out of. Now, because it's twin channel, I'm only working on this second channel here. And uh, let's say I want to use uh, this, the first channel as well. Well, on the floor, you won't see it, but there's a, a AB switch where I can have a delay set up in this channel. So I'll do the same EQ in a second and swap it to the other channel to have a groove sound. So
it's flat, so if I want to do anything... I'm repeating myself, so I can go there and actually... go to the straight channel. The same deal, I set the input gain. Exactly the same as what I did with the previous channel. So that's how the channels work and the pan. The difference here is that it has a, a, a volume for each channel. Channel A, you should leave full on. If you want to blend, you, the master will work on both, but as you turn it up, it'll change the balance. So you need to find a playing volume and then balance channel A to the master. Now, the preamp section of this came about uh, for, from two endorsees. One was Andre Berry from David Sanborn, and the other is Scott Colley from uh, John Schofield, Herbie Hancock. Um, Andre wanted extended top end from the very first preamp we did. So I changed the frequency on the, the treble that was on the first preamp, and I added an extra high frequency for him. So I added 10K. Uh, Scott plays upright. And he said to me, well, uh, I'm forever having to put the mic on my upright through the front of house and have it come through the monitor on stage and have to put my bridge pickup through an amp and then blend the front of house engineer with the amp. So I said, OK, I'll, do, I'll fix that. So in a twin channel preamp, this one is phantom powered. You can use it as two normal bases if you want, but for Scott, it's got a phantom power switch, and the switch is like an American light switch. On is up, so don't confuse. So that will send a phantom power source to his mic on his upright, and then he blends his bridge pickup on the upright with these two until he gets a nice blend of both, and he's a happy boy. So the front section came about via those two endorsees who are incredible players and very experienced. They know what they're talking about. Now you see two switches over here. There's a mute switch and a standby switch. The mute will kill everything straight away from the amp if you need to in a hurry for any problem with power. Standby is just a typical standby switch on millions of amps. It puts the amp into standby mode. Um, it's in standby mode now. Um, so there's nothing there. The signal's still going in. And that would still go to front of house too. So you hit a kill switch that comes with it. Now there's nothing going. I'll put the kill switch back in. I've got output. I flick in the standby switch, which will take just maybe a couple of seconds to come back in because there's valves in there. They need to kick in again. So that's about it. You can use it whichever way you do. Now, the WJBA, the newest addition to the Wayne Jones audio family, which I love and I'm proud of. Um, the rear section of it, what does it do? How do you plug it in? Easy. It's got a standard power cable. It has 115 volt or 230 volt selection. Power switch, not rocket science. Two speak on outs. Now, a thousand watts comes out of that one and a thousand watts comes out of that one. You have to plug them either into an 8 or 4 ohm load. You'll still get a thousand watts into whichever you choose. So whatever combination of cabinets you use, whether it's one WJ passive cab or two out of there, you'll get a thousand watts. And the same with this one. Now, also, there is a preamp output here, which you can further come out of there into WJ powered cabinets. So if I come out of these two, I can run two WJ powered 210s and get an extra 2000 watts, or I can run one. So how, what does that add up to? 2000 watts there, 2000 watts there, 4000 watts. Wow, just blow yourself out of the room. Now moving along, it's got an effects loop send and return. You can use it in mono or stereo. That's self-explanatory. The next section is the DI section. Uh, it has a ground or lift switch. If there's any hum or buzz at gigs, it has a pre or post button for pre or post EQ. XLR DI out. And then 
DI level control, fully off is unity gain, which means that's your line level. If your engineer wants more, you can turn and you can give him more. You can't give him less. The foot switch over here, which is here, that's a kill switch for the whole thing. So if you want to tune on stage or in the studio, you just hit that switch and tune and, and you won't uh, have any sound going to the front of house. Now the auxiliary section and the headphone section, this last section on the amp, is exactly what it says. There's an auxiliary input, either mini jack or quarter inch, both stereo, and you can plug your iPhone, iPad, whatever you want into there. If you're practicing with tracks, you can plug the headphones in, not disturb anybody, and use both those sections. If you actually use backing tracks and you're a solo bass player and you want your backing tracks coming through your amp, you can plug them in the auxiliary input. So that's about it. That's the rear section of the WJBA amplifier, and I love it. 